Welcome to Heart to Heart, our chats with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. I'm Lori Pearson, an admin from Mobile, Alabama, and I'm joined today by my fellow admins. I'm Christy Miller, and I'm from Hudsonville, Michigan. And I'm Marg Stark, and I'm from San Diego, California. And we're also joined by John Tinker, the When Calls the Heart showrunner. John, let's see, we've had you from Buckingham Palace, uh, a bunker and a chicken farm in North Georgia. Where are you? Where are you today? I've left the planet. I'm not coming back until everyone stops this infighting. <laughs> hey, let's, let's jump oh. into it because I'm running right. out of oxygen. <laughs> okay, we'll jump right in. Well, Chris Taylor of Barbersville, West Virginia, summed it up pretty well with her comment. I just want to say how much I enjoyed this episode. It had it all. Humor, inspiration, love, and trouble. Some, so much in so little time and so well done. Bravo. We know it was written by Derek Thompson and directed by Siobhan Devine. What was your favorite aspect of it, John? Well, right now, that's her comment is my favorite aspect. <laughs> my favorite scene mm -hmm. was Rosemary reading Elizabeth the letter on the back porch. Um, yes. and, uh, I, I just thought that was so sweet and, and it's really what that story was meant to convey. That's what the story was all about. That, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. that, absolutely beautiful. And, well and a shout out, I'm sorry, a shout out to my wife, whose title of one of her books I stole is the woman wrote, I know there's a better day coming. And my wife wrote a book called there's a better day coming. Hardy heard that. I thought Rhonda. Perfect. I, re I really did. I no, if you're going to steal, you steal from the best, <laughs> or someone who won't sue you. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Very true. Okay, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about the word flouted. It okay. just—it's inherently funny, <laughs> and the way Kevin delivered it was great. It was great. I so, who came up with the flouted heart idea? I, I don't remember. I don't recall. But, but I just adore the way he came. he said I'm not flouted you know it just was fabulous the way he read it and you know uh, you know um, they have large in my mind anyway Ned and, and Florence have large vocabularies and and they started that word puzzle which was I think right about now 1920 or so starting to be called a crossword puzzle um, mm -hmm. but but they have large vocabularies so we always try and give them a little extra zing in their their step when it comes to what what they're saying but but i thought kevin's reading of it was fantastic yes that was great and she is feisty flow so. she is fine she I, still I, is yeah you know there are, <laughs> there are there are times when i i'm watching the person speaking and i really need to watch go back and watch those folks and their reactions because some of loretta's reactions are priceless as florence and and the same about johanna she's she's great too they all are when they when it comes to the reactions to what's being said. And that's really, uh, uh, listening is one of the keys to being a good actor, I believe. Not being an actor myself, but that's what I've hear. That's where I've heard that. Yeah, that whole line where she said, you know, I would have believed that, that those shopkeepers applied to us, except they were such stick in the mods. It couldn't possibly be, <laughs> it couldn't possibly be us. So good, so good. Oh. Classic. Well, we have Mary Ridgeway Bruce of Columbus, Ohio, and she's very protective of that flouted heart. What can you tell us about May Sue? Is she maybe married? She may be a fugitive. What do we know about her? Here's another reason I've gone into outer space. <laughs> and I don't mean to be impatient, but the Hardys, some of the Hardys can be so impatient. They don't want the story to roll out. No, and they, they want to get to it. And, and as I've used the analogy of, you must have been, all, you know, shaking your presence before Christmas and looking under the tree. Um, here's what I can say. Here's, you know, we we don't want to. Um, although people get hurt, although our characters can get hurt, their heart their hearts can be flouted or not. Um, we we don't want to flout Kevin's heart right now. So that's what I can say. The mystery about May will continue to unfold, um, and and. You know, much of what Kevin will be doing this season will involve him, you know, finding his new relationship with Aaron and with with uh, Lucas 
and with the others around him, including women who may be interested in a very eligible bachelor mm. with a lovely daughter to boot. They're a package, mm. package pair. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Liz Kangro from East Chester, New York, wants to know more about the cousin relationship between Gustav and Lucas. Is it our imagination that Gustav always turns to butter around Elizabeth? He does. First of all, East Chester. Shout out to East Chester. I used to take the train past East Chester uh, on my way to Chappaqua, New York, when I lived back east. Um, yeah, they... Um, I just, I don't know why it tickled me so much that we landed upon him being his cousin and just suddenly revealing it and having Gowan say, he's your cousin? <laughs> and right. Lucas says, well, why are you still working here? Uh, he does turn to clarified butter around. He just adores Elizabeth uh, and, and thinks the world of her. And and there's another relationship that will that will take some steps this year between Lucas and and. Um, um, I'm sorry. I'm, thank you. Mark, help me out here. I'm sorry. Um, I'm um, in La La Land as well. So <laughs> and, yeah. and drinking my coffee. Mm -hmm. I need a cup of coffee. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. But I, lo I just love them being related. And, and again, it's, I love him as a, an ancillary character that, yeah. that in no way diminishes his contribution to the show. It's just, it is a smaller part, but I think whenever he's on the screen, um, he's just terrific. So Elizabeth's beautiful book was released and unfortunately she got some negative reviews and she says to Rosemary and Lee, you know what hurts the most? These reviews are mean. They're personal. These are fictional characters. I was just trying to tell a story. The way that she delivered that line, I mean, it just, of course, had a lot of resonance for the Hardys. Tell us about that, about that moment. Nothing, nothing to it. It's just a line. <laughs> just a line. No subtext no. whatsoever. You know what? I, I am not going to pin this all on, on Aaron by any stretch. I, I, I'm going to share some of this too. Um, although when she reads that line, I think that you're seeing something more than just a good actor. And we all felt it at the end of the year. Um, cr criticism we can take and 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 this is this is a cast that's professional and has been doing this a long time and a, and a crew and we, we are all here to to do the best we can and to help one another do the best we can but as she said the comments were just so mean last year not all of them obviously but there there was a limited number of comments that just really hurt and, and, and we could pretend and say they didn't, but that would be so, uh, it would not only be not true, it's not, it's not the right thing to do. People need to know um, how, how their words affect us because our words affect them obviously. And we're not, you know, this gets into a larger issue about the stories. You know, when we're deciding on particular stories, there's a lot to take into account. You have to think about the actor. Um, are they available? Do they want to do this story? Do you think they can do this story? Do you think they can carry it off? And, and most of them can do comedy and drama and everything in between. So that's a lesser concern. Then you have to think about the character, it, him or herself and, and where they are in their arc. You think about Hallmark and have you done this story before in eight seasons? And where would this naturally organically go whatever that narrative is, narrative is that you want to tell. There, there's a lot, and we take the audience into consideration. None of these stories are meant to upset people. They're all about, you know, the human drama and hopefully um, ultimately in a simpler way, just a place to which we can all go for an hour a week and enjoy ourselves. And, and, and whether it's Lucas or Kevin or, or Rip the dog or none of those things are done None of those choices are made when it comes to story or removal of a character. Um, it's just meant to be good storytelling. And, and no, do we, do we always succeed? Probably not. And more than that, succeeding or not, do we always tell the story that people want us to tell? Probably not. But there are a limited number of folks in the writer's room and, and then other folks who contribute and help guide us along. Everything from the actors to Hallmark 
Um, and we do listen to the audience as well, the viewers. But sooner or later, you got to decide what you're doing. And and um, it's never been uttered in the room. This will really upset them. Let's upset them with it. <laughs> let's really make them mad. Right. With let's rile those hardies up. Yeah. yeah let's <laughs> let's upset them and let's let's have fewer viewers and let's. <laughs> Well, I think what you all do so well and have done consistently is that you hold up a mirror to society and culture. And, you know, I think it was somewhat of a healing journey you took us on last night. Key to that healing, I think there were a few things. There was, you know, the, um, she was brooding on the balcony and Lucas says to her, um, you're open, you're vulnerable, don't callous your heart. And that is uh, such a beautiful line and it has um, such far reaching implications because I think as a society and as a culture, when we put each other in boxes and we callous our heart and don't stay open to listening to, to people and to new possibilities, it's, it's a shame, but I'll get off my high horse. Well, that's but- very, uh, Mark, I appreciate that. That's very, very well said. And, and I agree with you completely. And, and again, um, I don't want to pin it all on Aaron. Uh, I don't want to spotlight Aaron, but she's a very sensitive person. And um, I, I think she loves this show dearly. And she, uh, it means the world to her. And, and it, I think in part to be an actor, you have to have a sensitivity. And so it, it, I think it hurt a lot of the actors in various ways and it, and it hurt us. And, and we'll take the criticism um, some of it's warranted other not but that's opinion but just the way it was leveled was so destructive um and 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 for the show not even just for us but for the show um but i I think i think what then the next step was you know she entered a room with all of these supporters and she got a letter from somebody telling her personally what this book had meant to them and then she's, you know, she's gaining some perspective. She sits down with Rosemary and says, you know, I wrote this book as a love letter to my son and to all the people who supported me over the, you know, the nine years that I've been here, almost a decade that I've been here. And that of course, just feels like it's also a mirror. And so you have to put it in perspective that there's a few extremes and, and comments that are, you know, non-supportive. And then you have, a host of people who are here supporting you, who are giving you unprecedented ratings, who may not be quite as vocal, but whose passion for this show is unrivaled. So help us put that into perspective too. It was such a beautiful way to communicate it. I, I think you you did, um, but I, I will carry it over to the story with Joseph and Minnie and, and Angela's blindness. Um, what I love... It's an outrageous story in the very worst sense. And we don't talk about that necessarily. What I liked, and, and I talked with, with uh, Viv and Natasha about this storyline. And, and what they wanted to talk about was to acknowledge the hurt and, and, and the hate, but they weren't gonna park there. They were, they were moving on and, and they had found a place that they felt, as, as Joseph says, they can breathe. And, and, and if, if there's a regret, maybe if they had found it sooner, but uh, all things in their time. And uh, I just loved that it was important to both Viv and Natasha to talk about healing won't happen until you move on. And, and, and wow. otherwise it does turn into hate. And, and they okay, will. You're going to make me with, cry. That's so beautiful. They probably will beautiful. deal with, with the, with the kids later when, when they're a little bit older and, um, and, and, you know, Cooper's wrestling with his own stuff now and we're going to give. Yeah. So just let me recap for Hardy's. So the scene in the chapel, uh, I mean, it, it, it was um, so moving and it's uh, you know, we know that Cooper like children do, he's internalized and blames himself in a way that he is, he has sight and that his sister doesn't, even though they had the same, you know, illness. Um, and there's a terrible truth at the center of this that she was refused treatment. And it was just, first of all, so well-written, so well-acted and directed, I'm sure as well. Um, 
I just, I didn't get that connection, but it is, um, I love that idea that they're in a place where they can breathe, but that's, they've moved on. They, you know, they're, and, they're, and they said literally, we, you know, they moved down the road and found a spot in their lives, practically speaking. And, and they've also, I think that Viv, uh, I think that Joseph has more peace about it. Perhaps that may change because we all know that sometimes emotions that have been laid to rest can somehow bubble back up. Um, maybe uh, Minnie does a little less, so, but, but also um, Cooper's, you know, why her, why not me? And, oh, and it's in wow. part why he's angry. He hasn't said I'm angry with God, but you know, it, it, he's, he's wrestling with that as well. So uh, as a, I, in my past life as a teacher, I taught students with visual impairments. So the Angela story is very close to my heart. Oh, and gosh. To hear I Cooper. I'm like, yeah, I've seen that with siblings. Siblings, uh-huh. there is sibling guilt there. And and also and guilt sometimes because they don't like that the sibling is getting all the attention. Wow. So I know it's Cooper's a family be dealing dynamic, with that I'm too. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For Beautiful. That. Next. Okay. <laughs> Where are we at now? You're <laughs> It's you, Lori Wyman Walden. Uh, oh, they get to go to oh Wyman <laughs> Walden. What a that what man, a transition! It's a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, he it really does. gave us all the heat. Wyman. <laughs> and that scene with Elizabeth, go there. he was just kind of he was almost rattling in that scene. Like when he rattling. descends the stairs and he's and he's uh-huh. at the end of the show. No, yeah, he I mean, gave me the EBGBs. Yeah, and I love she, Aaron's very good in that scene too. She just. We we trust Aaron's barometer, and and it's so immediately spikes that that we understand what's what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Perhaps I the next know. scene, however, might have been a an issue. yeah. That's the one when Lucas starts speaking French and showing all this mm-hmm. anger. Boy, Hardy's head started spinning. So, what's the connection between Wyman Walden? Okay, got lots of questions here. What's okay. the connection between Wyman Walden and the widow Jeanette from season six? What's Lucas up to? Phyllis Plummer from Fulton, New York, wants to know what's he up to. <laughs> He's in God. six. That's outside my purview. Who's this? <laughs> you know, was I? Was I? Did I miss class that day? <laughs> uh, there can, was a treasure chest of fish and cash and Jeanette was involved. Oh, and, yeah, 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 yeah. I, it's, Amy, I don't Al, have, Amy Allie, Dixon, uh, Allie yeah, Devereaux is beside me. That's, yeah. that's mm-hmm. what's the problem here. By the way, did you notice that it was Devereaux Publishing that, that published the book? Uh, I saw um, that. Um, uh, um, you know, he's such an opportunist. He's such a sneaky guy. Um, as far as we're concerned now, moving forward, He's come back. What you'll find out is he's come back for a very particular reason. Now, wait a minute. Now, who's who's come back? I lost you. There. Wyman Walden is coming back. Wyman, oh, okay. Wyman Walden come back. Well, we have Walden. to be clear. We're talking about Wyman Walden. Wyman. It's the sneaky he's come one. back for a very particular reason, which will come out later. But I want those Lucas fans. You gotta, or or you're not a Lucas fan. Hang in there with Lucas because. You know, that scene was not in the original script and, and, and it was in the original shooting script, but it wasn't, a, it was a very different scene. And uh, because we decided to do a little, a little uh, end around with, with Walden, but don't, I would, I would adjure those either rooting for Lucas. Well, no, those rooting against Lucas. And I hope they're few because I think he's a good guy. He's a great guy. He's, 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 he's a good guy. He's not, he's not um, doing anything nefarious here and just hang in there with him and see what he's doing. He's upset and he's, he's, he's really trying to do something good here. And he says to the woman on the phone, I, I want to gain his confidence, but I need some help. Help me. And, and he's panicked. And again, that will roll out. And as you saw in the in the uh, trailer for next week's episode, he the thing the only thing he's really worried about is has he stepped in it and put 
Elizabeth and little Jack in danger. That's the only thing he cares about. And he's, he's rattled about that. Um, but I'm not a fan of Wyman Walden and I'm not a fan of Wyman Walden's hats either. <laughs> <laughs> he's got bad hats. Very it was bad a bad, I, I, I love yeah. Barbara, but yeah. I, I didn't see that hat. <laughs> that, for the older people in the audience, especially in, in the United States, uh, Jackie, uh, on the Jackie Gleason show, they used to have a character named Crazy Guggenheim. And he would yeah. wear his hats way down like this. And he'd come into the bar every week. But but he looked a bit like Crazy Guggenheim in that hat it when we first reminded saw. me of Chico Marx. <laughs> <laughs> But he's a great he's a great actor and we love him and and uh, but he's a bad guy. The character is a bad guy. You get that feeling from him as soon as he walks on the screen. He's doing yeah, a good and, job. And again, it's a, it's always important um, to to let you know um, how we should be. Well, it's obvious because Aaron uh, Elizabeth let us know right away. Here's a here's a here's a side note which nobody may care about. Uh, the Mary Tyler Moore pilot. No one liked Rhoda. Everyone, when they <laughs> tested the pilot, no one liked Rhoda. And uh, they used words like to New York. Well, and she was trying to throw Mary out of her apartment. Right. As I uh -huh. The way they got us to like Rhoda is they had Lisa Gerritsen, Bess, who played Phyllis Lindstrom's daughter, like Rhoda. And that was Marge Mullen, who was the script supervisor at the time on Mary's shows, had that suggestion to the writers. Another example of great ideas can come from all sorts of people in all sorts of disciplines. And so they wrote it in that, that Lisa Gerritsen, that best, really liked Aunt Rhoda, thought she was fun. So that allowed us <laughs> as the audience, because Bess was a good judge of character, that we should also give her a second chance. So the rest cool. is history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there, you know, I, I can't, rem I can't uh, reference this show because it's not family friendly, but there's a prominent show on television where they just did a behind the scenes where there's a problem between the costumer with a hat and the director. Is that like a traditional thing that direct directors or cinematographers don't like hats because it's shadows and it's whatever. And there's a, well, and, and not to um, tell too many secrets. I, Hallmark did not, respond to hats um and and well, that's, that's what i heard that, yes. originally in the second first and second season correct because they do they're not wrong i mean they do obscure your face and they're tough to light and things like that they're right so that's why there was a a, a, a dearth of women's finery you know there was not a milner in town so <laughs> although there was at the end of the end of the street if you go all the way to uh jack's uh, bill Ga bill's office off on the left i think there's a milner Anyway, wow. um, but we reintroduced those a little bit and um, and the DP and folks put up with them. Um, yeah, Mr. You know, Land Barbara, Barbara, Barbara has such incredible right taste. Here. She she never she never whiffs. I just love her. And I I see that you posted an interview with Barbara. Just adore her. And I, I yeah. You know, she even puts up with my stupid jokes like stop the accent. Just drop the accent. The phony accent. <laughs> But she's just endearing and, and energetic yeah. and creative. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how they do it. She and her team, they, they work almost around the clock to, yeah. to fix the costumes, to take them in, let them out, mm -hmm. adapt them, use them. They are awesome. Well, we, we think that these hats are adding to the sinister nature. Uh, yeah. Wyman, we, Weasel. I think we know who Wyman. the bad guys are by them. Why yeah, and, and by the way, oh, and, and Jack and um, and Nathan got his new hat. I love the Mountie hats. Those are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you guys have created this magical world. And, you know, the very best thing about the Hardys is how fiercely attached we get to your incredible world that you've created. But also our Achilles heel is that we get very very fiercely attached. So I wonder if you could help. Is there an ideal way to enjoy the show? Is there a stance that we should take that truly leads to the enjoyment of the show? Because you guys obviously like to write against type, against stereotypes, and also these actors want to play nuanced characters, but, you know, sometimes Hardys are a little bit resistant to introducing those layers mm -hmm. well 
the, you know, such are the vicissitudes of life that we're, our characters are going to change. We're going to change. Um, you know, uh, I think it's already out there, so I'm not spoiling anything, but now that, that Lucas and Elizabeth are committed in this relationship, I mean, really committed and, 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 you know, he's going to become a stepfather if in fact he proposes. So he's got to see what that feels like. And does that work? And, mm -hmm. and now that, now that Nathan is single again, does he want to get into a relationship again? I know what Kevin, Kevin uh, McGarry thinks, but does Nathan want to do it? Um, I think the actors won't, they do like to play different things, but they don't want to violate their character. And if they believe we're taking that character in a, in a direction in which that character would not go, they'll speak up. And, and as writers, we appreciate that um, because I've said it before, they often know their characters better than we do, especially after having played them for eight seasons. But um, I, I was, I've been trying to wrestle here with asking for their trust but to trust us that, as I've said, we don't want to, sh to hurt them, the characters or the audience. We like to tell stories that roll out over time and, and, and not just tell a quick story without any real depth to it. And to tell a story with some depth, one that's going to have some resonance over time, both for the audience and for the character, it, it takes a little doing. And we have a lot of characters. So... They maybe you're that. saying just patience it <clears throat> takes patience, patience more than that, that more than adaptability <laughs> it's really patience yeah um it, it this is isn't a quick ride at your neighborhood your county fair this is a disney world type long term telling a story ride i hope so i and and and, and for like. all kinds of good reasons all of us hope this show goes on for a much longer time but in order to do that Folks need to have new experiences and, and not only do they, the characters not know how they may react to them, the audience won't know how they'll react to them until they get there. So yeah, I think patience and trust that, that we're gonna do our very best to, to tell stories that, that um, we value and that, are, that we can look at warmly. I love this show. I really love this show. And, and um, they're killing me that we haven't been picked up. It's killing me. Oh, goodness. The floors oh. Night. <laughs> well, that's a matter of time, we hope. But Hardy's yes. are going to continue to show up and yes. make their voices heard till that they happens. Do. Some of these arcs, these stories take 12 episodes to tell in their entirety. Yeah. Well, I, I, so maybe know. it's not a matter of attachment; it's a matter of patience. And we are we like short term, right? Short -term and and I can tell you, Nathan's story, Nathan's story is going to take longer time to tell than say the Walden story. The Walden story will will with Lucas will wrap up roughly mid season. The oh, Nathan wow. story oh. continues. Um, okay. So if you don't if you don't like something, just hang in there. I promise we're going to bring something else that will. That you like so what you're saying is these long suffering Nathan lovers have a little longer to <laughs> be patient. <laughs> well, I don't know that they they should suffer for him. Um, no, no, character and he's doesn't having suffer so but, much fun but, with it that we're yeah, having. And, fun and with by it. the way, if it's any consolation, and I don't like mixing fact with fiction, Kevin McGarry did not want to just jump into a relationship, and I think he's right. I think he's right. As much as as fun as that would be to jump into another relationship, just as he can't turn on a dime with his relationship with with either Lucas or Elizabeth, it takes time to heal his heart, his flouted heart, um, whether it's flouted or not. But it, it takes time. So next week, it's like a Marvel movie <laughs> with with the bad guys descending on Hope Valley, uh, Mr. Landis and the Pinkertons and of course, Wyman Walden. And in the midst of it, Lucas is babysitting little Jack. <laughs> and, and by the way, if you don't like Landon, if you don't like, you know, uh, Walden, maybe Walden will change. Maybe you'll come to like him. Maybe Landis will change. Maybe you'll come to Redemption. Him. Interesting. Hmm. 
Marvel doesn't do that. But you don't have to, you don't have to like everyone and, um, but you will like a lot of these people because this town does that to, to people. This town Is that your way of fun. avoiding giving us any little hint about next week? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm avoiding it in part because, like I said, we shot these so long ago. I mean, come on, we're going to see Lucas babysit. That's little it, crumbs. Oh, I love this stuff. The stuff oh, Mark with, Gold. this little boy took, as I said, he took right away to Peter Deloise, who's a who's a hoot to begin with. But but um, both Aaron and and um, Chris. He's just adorable. Well, we're having so much fun with these heart to hearts. And honestly, we have Derek Thompson coming up tonight. So we're going to talk with a writer who's done 23 episodes, you know, eight seasons. So that'll be. Yeah, phenomenal. those those numbers can be can be misleading. He's right. A, probably more than that. Too. Right. He's a huge, huge part of this show. Uh, he is a real, uh, you know, weather vane when it comes to which way the wind's blowing, which way we might go. So you'll have fun talking to him. He's a good guy. So much more to come, but thank you, John, for thank making you. time. Thank, it means the world thank to you, us. Marty. And, and I, I, I'm not trying to, I just, uh, you mean a lot to us. I'm not trying to take anyone to task necessarily. Just letting you know that we really do take you seriously and to heart. And I don't mean any corny pun intended. We really do. We take the show to heart and, and the viewers to heart. And it's, and it's why we're still here. So thank you. Well, and it's an extraordinary privilege that you guys give us as much access and interact with us in all the ways that you do from Aaron to you, to Brian, to everybody in the cast. So we want you to stay open and vulnerable. We don't want calloused hearts. And so we're really very, very grateful. Um, thank you, Hardys, for your very warm reception to Heart to Heart. We are here every week with John Tinker, and we hope you'll join us on Twitter with the hashtag Hardies, and on Sunday nights, eight o'clock on the Hallmark Channel. See you soon.